The Fast and Furious films bring us some of the coolest cars in the world. And today, I'm talking about the best and most expensive automotive beauties this franchise has featured. Starting with a classic, the 2005 Aston Martin DB9 GT. Astons are usually associated with a certain British secret agent. Revolving number plates, naturally. Valid all countries. That might be why Deckard Shaw, Jason Statham's British secret agent, also drives one of these cars. The DB9 is seen in one scene of the seventh movie in the franchise, where he meets Dom in an underpass. Dom shows up to the party with his trusty Dodge Charger, naturally. The two of them crash into each other, which is the only time you'll ever see any part of a Dodge touch any part of an Aston. I wonder why Aston Martins keep getting wrecked in movies. Is that like a stipulation of their movie deals? Now, costing a cool $155,000, the DB9 GT is expensive, but it's a car you could maybe someday afford. It's gonna feel downright reasonable compared to some of the cars on this list, such as the 69 Yanko Camaro. While the franchise has featured cars from across the world. This is an American movie series. As such, many of the coolest cars we've seen from the Fast and Furious movies have been American desirables. This Chevy Yanko Camaro is no exception, turning up all the way back in 2003's Too Fast, Too Furious. In this sequel, rival driver Corpy uses this car to win a challenge for Veroni the drug lord. The car doesn't take him the distance, alas, and it doesn't help him later in the movie either when he races it against Brian. See, that race ends with Brian taking the Yanko's pink slip. Remember when these movies were about racing? So it's time to talk price, and I'ma need you to sit down for this one. We're already doubling it up from the Aston, with this Camaro valued at $300,000. For a car that failed its driver twice in one movie? Please! You want a better way to spend $300,000? How about a 2019 McLaren 720? Yes. This supercar was featured in the spin-off movie Hobbs and Shaw, and since it's a European car, I'll let you guess who drove it. The James Bond of the series really put this thing through its paces, chasing the villain through the streets of Edinburgh. With the raw power that McLarens have under the hood, it's a miracle that he got away. I will point out that these movies do have to go a little out of their way to flatter the car sometimes. Like, there's no way a McLaren can fit Dwayne freaking Johnson inside by himself. Sharing space with Jason Statham and Vanessa Kirby? That might be the most unrealistic thing to happen in a Fast and Furious movie. But if you're a solo driver with at most one partner and one child, you might consider a 720S for yourself. It only costs 15 grand more than that Yanko Camaro, but it's way more capable. Keep in mind, though, that you may not be capable of finding one of these. Here's a car that'd be easier to track down, but harder to afford. Up next is the 2011 Lexus LFA. For most people who only like cars for commuting, Lexus might not strike them as a sporty brand, but the LFA is one of the few sports cars the brand has made, and it's a doozy. It is one of the most desirable things Lexus has ever made. <laughs> And while it isn't as rare as a McLaren, you won't find it at the local Lexus dealer. This car was seen in Fast Five. So where to now? I don't know. Never been to Madrid. The first movie to break away from the race-centric formula of the series. A reboot of sorts for the series, it sees Dom assemble the gangs from across the series to pull off a bank heist. The LFA is what one of the characters, Han, does with his spoils from the robbery. He'd need everything he got from the mission because the LFA costs around $375,000. The car is so expensive that it survives an appearance in the Fast and Furious series, but the LFA was just a supporting character. The 65 Ford GT40 was the real star. Another Another car that doesn't get wrecked in the movie, the GT40 actually plays a key role in the plot. Dom and his gang pinch the car from notorious drug lord Hernan Reyes. and brings it back to their hideout. The locations of the safe houses that become the target of our heroes happen to be sitting in the entertainment system of the vehicle. Yeah, that's a pretty fast and furious way of moving the story along, isn't it? Like the LFA, the GT40 survives the movie unscathed. There are two reasons for this. First off, this thing costs $500,000. Secondly, the GT40 is a big time movie star in its own right. With Ford versus Ferrari, the car has an Academy Award winning film devoted to it. Now, these cars were expensive 
impressive, but let's kick it up a notch with the Eagle Speedster. A deep cut even among gearheads, the Speedster is a beautiful piece of craftsmanship. This is a car that has no need to impress. It tells you everything you need to know at first glance. It has a cameo in Fast and Furious 6, appearing after a setback in the gang's plan. Factory line beamers that people didn't expect. Hey. The car's a hell of a car. You're talking about twin turbo V8 spitting out 560 ponies, son. When the BMW they were using goes kaput, Dom sends Taj and Hobbs to get them a new ride from a nearby auction. Because the pair have been through some stuff, the auctioneer assumes that they're time wasters. Not enough to be playing here, so if you're not kitchen help, then you must be in the wrong place. They proceed to prove him wrong by buying every car on the lot. That includes the Speedster, which is a little surprising. I know these guys stole $10 million in the last movie, but the Speedster goes for $1.5 million by itself. Thankfully, the car doesn't get destroyed in the flick. It's probably gathering dust in someone's garage like it should. If you thought we were getting crazy right now, you need to strap in. I haven't even brought up the Bugatti yet. If you remembered the appearance the 2011 Bugatti Veyron made in Furious 7, you were probably waiting for it to top this list. One of the most expensive cars in the world, and once the fastest in the world, shows up where else but in Abu Dhabi. Unsurprisingly, the Bugatti doesn't participate in the building hopping stunt that takes place in the city. It's just the ride Roman pulls up in as a flex. And it's one heck of a flex indeed, with the 2011 Veyron going for 2.4 million easy. That's basically double the last car. This car doesn't actually top the list though. We can get much higher, and the 2013 Lycan Hypersport will take us there. I won't tease you with the price of this bad boy, $3.4 million. This is a car so exclusive and rare, you might never get to see one in person. The part of Furious 7 that takes place in the United Arab Emirates really was about putting the most expensive cars on screen, wasn't it? When the gang arrives in Abu Dhabi, the Hypersport is just chilling at the Etihad Towers. And if you remember the Etihad Towers, you know what's coming. Funnily, the most expensive car in the entire franchise did take part in its craziest stunt. You realize what this is? Like in Hypersport? I guess if you're gonna spend three million bucks on a car, you might as well smash it. I'm just kidding, of course. There's no way the car destroyed in the movie was a genuine article. So those are some of the coolest and most expensive rides in the Fast and Furious movies. Let me know if I've left your favorites off the list.